Now, you seem to be presenting an interesting double-faced uh, perspective on this issue. Now, on one hand, you are criticizing the Arewa youth for giving out a quick notice. But on the other hand, too, you seem to have a sympathy for some of the uh, grievance against the Igbos. You, you, you feel that the, the North is being provoked by the Igbos and this uh, ethnic uh, sentiment is being inflamed by the Igbos. So could you explain the, the double-faced uh, standpoint? No, they didn't make any demand. They only threatened the Igbos to leave this and they have no right to do that. If they have any grievances about the Igbos, they should bring them out. And we, go, we provide that facilities for dialogue and we talk about it. Since they started it, I've been reaching out to the leadership of the Igbos. They kept quiet. Are they supporting what the youth are doing? No. But now I think they are doing something. Thank goodness the acting president has taken the gunlet and is calling the relevant uh, authorities to talk, talk and discuss. Yesterday we had discussion with them of some northern leaders. Tomorrow, today I think he's meeting the evil leaders, the traditional rulers and the rest of them. So we should allow the acting president now to handle this issue. All this clamor for self-determination, uh, we don't want uh, this particular tribe in our... Do you think it is a majority demand from some of these uh, ethnic groups? Is, is it a popular voice of the people or just a selfish desire of some few but powerful people? No, it's not a popular demand. It's an expression by youth who feel that their counterparts in the southeast are making such demands with menace, if I may call it. And they thought enough is enough, but they didn't consult the elders. That is why the elders came out immediately to hearken them and caution them to be very careful over what they are saying. Now, is the leadership of the ACF, the Arewa Consultative Forum, firmly in control of its youth? I think they are. But I have told you earlier on that the acting president is currently handling this issue. I don't think it is fair for me to now start making comments. But do you think there is a need for some internal cleansing or internal control mechanism now? Well, it will come out because he's talking to all relevant sections of the divide. With the vice president reading out the riot act and a strong declaration against any divisive and hate uh, statements, do you think this addresses the issues on ground or this is merely begging the question, does this provide a sustainable solution to the problem on ground? The VPO acting president has not read the riot act because he wants that he will not tolerate any divisive statements coming from any of the groups. Yes, but that is his responsibility as head of a government now. Don't forget the purpose of government as stated in the constitution is the, the security and welfare of the people. And if there are threats to these, it is the duty of the leadership of the government of the country to start making noise. But he said he's dialoguing with some people. Let us allow him to finish his dialogue. And I'm sure at the end of it, appropriate statements will be issued. Now, when we look at some of these uh, appointments, especially key appointments in terms of uh, looking at the security apparatus that is mainly dominated by the North, uh, the Igbos have expressed fears of ethnic domination ethnic domination by the North and unfair treatment of, South, uh, uh, of the Southeasterners. Would you say this is a valid point? What do you mean domination? Who is dominating who? We have 250 tribes in this country. Out of these 250 tribes, go to the region or geopolitical region, Southwest 
it's one tribe. Southeast is one tribe. South, south, that is why you have some other tribes. Group them, say 10, 15, plus 2, 17. The rest, why are they located? Northwest, northeast, and north central. What about the other tribes in those areas? Are they complaining? Nobody is even talking about them. They used to talk about ethnic nationality. They have stopped it now because it is no longer viable. What would you say is the reason for this torrent of distrust and agitations coming from different tribes? Because this is coming too many, especially in this time. The thing is, has been with us all along. One that is justice, equity, and fairness since we move. But one that is discrepancies here and there, things will not move, agitation will grow and continue. That leadership is a thing. Everybody wants to become president. But the laws, the constitution stipulated how to achieve this. Now, let's seem to, let's try to dig deep, perhaps if we could find a justification to some of this clamor for Biafra and the the accusation of uh, political marginalization in the Southeast now. They are saying that they are not given a sense of belonging. This is coming from the leader of the Oeneze Indigo. And it says that if the political status quo continues in court, they will be left with no choice than to seek for self-determination and to, uh, to, to address their political future. How do you see such statements? What is the current political arena? You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time, setting the record straight on restructuring Nigeria. Find out from the chairman of the Arawa Consultative Forum, Ibrahim Kumasi Jabrin. Join us again.